Getting different awesome lenses is great. You know it, I know it. That's what makes our gas keep going. Personally, I'm a prime lens believer and I'm sure many refer themselves to the same religion. But the recent trends and developments in camera industry made me thinking whether it will stay the same for us photographers in the future. Processors are getting more capable and much faster than ever before, while the sensors go far beyond the resolutions we could ever imagine, already reaching the territory of medium format. And it seems like lens designers have no problems making some ass whooping glass that can resolve all that resolution. So time and time again I'm getting more convinced that high-res cameras with fixed lenses are really ought to become the future of photography. Let me explain. Yo, what up people, it's Aperture Value and in today's episode I'll be spilling out the idea that have been bothering my head recently and uh, hopefully you can share with me what you think about it as well. So point and shoot camera was always something that uh, more or less serious amateur and professional photographers would normally ignore. They emerged as entry-level cams for regular people to take family and vacation pictures, while actual photographers were all into digital SLRs at the time. Digitalization of cameras brought many companies to the point-and-shoot market that weren't really camera brands. And one of them was Sony. Sony was the one to introduce the next step of camera evolution in the shape of mirrorless design. Being overall a high-tech company, Sony made their cameras smaller and more capable, which in turn pushed the whole market into the same direction. So given all that, better tech and more mirrorless designs used in APS-C and full-frame cameras, each brand also stepped up their point-and-shoot game, only now it reached such a serious level that it would be more correct to describe them as fixed-lens cameras. While initial point-and-shoot market died because of the excellent camera technology in mobile phones, now fixed-lens cameras are positioned as compact companions to photographers who know that they're better than iPhones. They now have decent sensors, awesome lenses, aperture rings, exposure compensation dials, electronic viewfinders and nice ergonomics. And here we are with such great cameras like full-frame Leica Q and Sony RX1 with fixed fast primes, APS-C Ricoh GR and Fuji X100 and XF10 cameras also with a fixed fast prime. Canon even managed to make an APS-C G1X Mark III with a fixed zoom lens, same what Panasonic did with their Micro Four Thirds LX100 camera. And the most recent models boast an impressive high-resolution sensors above 40 megapixels like Leica Q2, Sony RX1 R2 and Zeiss ZX1. That allows more versatility with better cropping options and decent resolutions, which makes your fixed lens act more like a zoom, which is dope. Others like Fuji and Ricoh, although using a standard 24 and 26 megapixel sensors, also let you crop digitally even more. Both of them offer tele and wide converters for their fixed lens cameras, which is also a good way to add versatility. And you might think that, well, yeah, it's kinda cool, but I'm still gonna get better results with my interchangeable lens cameras. And you'll be right. Until some point. And let me tell you, that point is not that distant in the future anymore. Leica already showed some impressive tech in their new M11 60 megapixel sensor with variable resolution options. Sony already has cameras with 50 and 60 megapixel sensors and is rumored to have been developing a 100 megapixel one. Fuji is going to announce a 40 megapixel APS-C camera just in a few months and Nikon has already showed to the world that making a good performing camera without the physical shutter is possible. So imagine cameras like Leica Q3, Sony RX1 R3, Ricoh GR4 and the next Fuji X100 model in the future. They would be very high resolution cameras with smaller size due to lack of shutter and awesome performing lens as well, because without the shutter and the lens mount in the way, it is easier to create an optically superb lens. I mean, look at Fuji X100V, their 23mm f2 Fujinon in it is so small and it easily outperforms their own 23 f2 prime. I'm sure there will be another tech that would make these cameras even better. For instance, I can easily imagine a powerful IBIS that would allow handheld pixel shift shots just like Olympus did in their Micro Four Thirds system. That would give even higher resolution photos that you can crop in 2-3 times. There are already a whole lot of people using fixed lens cameras happily, and if the future will be as I've described, I would definitely consider getting a Leica Q3, for instance, or the next Fuji X100. 
Let's suppose there will be an X100 camera with 40 megapixel sensor and IBIS. If I'm sure I can get enough resolution to work with after cropping, I would prefer this instead of carrying an X-Pro camera with a couple of primes. Before I opted for smaller sensor and less tech to get a smaller, more compact setup, but if bigger sensor and latest tech makes it even more compact, I'm all in. Especially if that would be some new fixed lens medium format camera from Fuji, which they know how to make. And I'm pretty sure that with higher resolution sensors and more efficient digital zoom, many photographers would be glad to have one do-it-all camera without the need for extra lenses. That would make all the entry-level camera bodies with lenses gradually disappear. I don't say that these cameras will be a viable replacement for every photographer, there still will be heads that want their lenses and cameras to cover everything from 8 to 800 mm with f1.4 and 60 megapixels. You know it. I know it. But most reasonable people would be definitely happy with a fixed 28, 35 or 40 mm lens camera that would allow decent crop up to short telephoto angle of view with enough pixels left. If you agree, leave a comment below and if you don't agree, leave a comment below. I wanna see what you think about this. See ya.